Oh, hi there. I'm Bob the Tomato. Uh, come on over to my house. Welcome to my house. It's the one up on the hill. It's the place I cook my dinners, take my baths, and pay my bills. It's the place that I get letters from kids like you. Hi, Bob. Hi, Larry. Every day we get a letter. Gotta make the problem better. Do you like my yellow sweater? Veggie Tales. You've seen us on DVD. But now at last we're on TV. From Portland to Schenectady. It's Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales. It'd be time for Veggie Tales. What's your sweater got to do with anything? Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. On TV. Uh, that's right, Larry. Uh, we're waiting for the mail to come so we can start the show. <gasps> there it is now. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Can we have the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. Hmm, I'll just, uh, hmm. It just hand it to me over the door. No, I can get this. Uh. Hmm. Until next time, enjoy your mail. What's it say, Bob? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, my friend Sarah is acting kind of weird. And none of the other girls like her anymore, and they want me to stop liking her, too. What should I do? Signed, Lucy, Cement City, Michigan. Ooh, Cement City. That's fun. Focus on the problem, Larry. Well, Lucy... Uh, just a sec. Problems with weird friends, is it? We were right in the middle of... The answer, dear Lucy, lies in my big book of oddities. In 1852, British doctor Lucius Vernon became concerned by the weird behavior of his longtime friend Alexander. His other friends told him to ignore Alexander, but he didn't want to do that. So instead, he built a rocket for Alexander and shot him to the moon, where his weird behavior bothered no one. It did, however, attract the attention of a herd of moon beavers who hotwired Alexander's spaceship, flew back to Earth, and invaded Switzerland. The end. If your friend starts behaving weirdly, shoot them to the moon! Cool! Uh, no! We can't tell them that! Look, Lucy, if you want to know what to do with your friend Sarah, take a look at this. So you see, Lucy, the best thing to do for Sarah is to stick with her, to be her friend even if all her other friends have left. Not only will you be doing what you're supposed to do, you might even discover why Sarah started acting weird in the first place. You might solve that problem, too. The weird guy in that story looked a lot like you. No relation. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house today. We'll see you next week. Goodbye! Bye. Are you sure Lucy shouldn't shoot her to the moon? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, Larry, weren't you watching the show? How about Mars? It's red. Well, it doesn't matter what color it is, it still isn't a nice place to send your friends. What if Lucy and Sarah both went to the moon? Would they be back in time for dinner? Certainly. Probably. I guess that would be okay. Great! Then it's settled. Uh, I'm sorry, what? You think I could get one of those in chartreuse? Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. That's right, and we're waiting for a letter. Why are you talking so fast, Bob? We got a big show today, and I don't want to waste any time. I got it. Mail, mail, here is your... Hey, I didn't finish my song. No time. It says, Dear Bob and Larry, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay, here it is. My friend Chester hit me today. Tomorrow, I think I should hit him back. What do you think? Felix, Sand Hill, Arizona. Wow, what I got a story for you, Felix. Pay close attention. Okay, roll it. So you see, Felix, to be a good friend, you need to treat Chester the way you want him to treat you, even if he hasn't always treated you the same way. And that goes for everyone, not just our friends. Whew, tricky stuff. But important. Well, we made it. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. So, Bob, how'd you know you were going to get a letter that would need that big, long story? Hmm? Oh, easy. Could I read the script, too? Uh, sure. It's like reading your own mind, speaking the words you knew you'd speak before you spoke them. I'd be able to see the future, forecast the weather, predict the winner of the Super Bowl. Where do they keep these scripts? Oh, I can't tell you that. Oh, rats. Isn't it a little warm to be wearing a sweater? It's a loose knit. Hi, kids.
kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. Right, oh, Larry. And we're waiting for a letter with a question that we're going to answer. Right again. There it is. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Nice song, Jimmy. Where's the letter? It's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to me. No trouble, don't mind a bit. We're gonna have to do something about that mail slot. What's it say? It says, Dear Bob and Larry. That's us. Uh, yes, I know. Dear Bob and Larry, Marvin is mean to me. He takes my toys at playtime. I built a tower with blocks, and he smashed it. Frederico says I should smash his tower, too. What do you think? Peter... Hammond, Indiana. Well, Pete, I came as soon as I could. Clearly, what Peter needs is a story from my big book of oddities. We were just... Uh, let's see. Ah, here it is. In 1523, Giuseppe Palermo built a tower entirely out of cabbage. People came from miles around to see Giuseppe's cabbage tower and to buy his homemade mayonnaise. But Giuseppe's neighbor Guido was angry, for the cabbage tower was blocking his view. So one night, he pulled down the tower, destroying the mayonnaise stand and smashing the cabbage to bits. Giuseppe was furious and vowed revenge until he noticed Guido had inadvertently invented coleslaw, which turned out to be an even bigger hit than the cabbage tower. The end. So, Peter, go ahead and smash those towers. You just might reinvent coleslaw. You're kidding me, right? What? Should I be? Uh, Pete, uh, forget everything you just heard. Uh, listen to this story instead. That was good, too, I suppose. You see, Pete, being mean to a bully just makes you a bully, too. We're supposed to be kind to our enemies. If we do, we'll find out we have the power to turn enemies into friends. That was beautiful, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house today. We'll see you next week. Goodbye! Goodbye. But where will we get the coleslaw? What? If we're all kind and we don't knock down each other's towers, where will we get the coleslaw? It was from the store, Archibald. There are companies that make coleslaw nowadays. You can just buy it at the store. Really? What an age we live in! How about the baked beans? Where could I get a sweater like that? Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. Yep. I wonder what question we're going to get in the mail today. I don't know. I'll get it. It wasn't the mail guy. It was the guy who mows your lawn. Oh. I told him to come back later because we're taping our TV show. Okay. Your grass is a little long, but I figured it could wait another day or two. You're probably right. That must be him. Mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Well, where is it? Oh, it's right here. I'll just stick it through the mail slot. No, that's okay. Just hand it to me. No, oh, I got it. Okay, thanks. All in the line of duty. What's it say? Let's see. Dear Bob and Larry, I have two donuts. The kid next door wants one. My mom says I should share, but if I do, I'll lose a donut. Why should I share? Escondido, California. Hmm. Good question, Danny. You see... Coming through! Make way! Sharing emergency! Uh, what? Oh, we can handle I got here as fast as I could. I got just what you need, Danny. <laughs> here, take a look at this. Donuts and you. Dad, did you have to share your donuts when you were a kid like me? Pesky mosquitoes. Uh, what was that you said? He asked about your donuts, Dad. When you were a kid, did you have to share them like we do? I'm not quite following you. Let's ask your mother. We didn't have to share our donuts. We wanted to share our donuts because of Johnny Donut Seed. That's right, Jane. Johnny Donut Seed crisscrossed America with a pot on his head and a bag of donut seeds at his side. Why, we wouldn't have anything if it weren't for Johnny Donut Seed. Today, 
our farmers raise millions of acres of donuts, collecting countless bushels of precious donut seeds. We've learned how to melt down excess donuts to build jet planes. Why, even the Eiffel Tower was built out of surplus American donuts. Boy, if sharing donuts is good enough for Johnny Donut Seed, it's good enough for me. Me too. Remember, kids, for a stronger America tomorrow, share your donuts today. That made no sense at all. It's avant-garde. It's ridiculous. Fellas, may I try? Danny, check this one out. Not bad. Thank you very much. I still think we can do better. Danny, I think this story will answer your question. Impressive costumes. Thanks. You see, Danny, if you do what your mom says, you'll lose a donut, but you'll gain a friend. And friends last a lot longer than donuts. So true, Bob. So true. Hey, kids. Thanks for coming to my house today. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bet you didn't know the Eiffel Tower was made out of donuts. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's made out of steel. That's what the French want you to think. But have you ever licked it? Uh, the Eiffel Tower? Yeah. Have you licked it? Of course not. Then you would know. Know what? That it tastes like a glazed donut. You're making that up. Am I? I can't wear sweaters. Too itchy. Tried wearing a shirt underneath? Huh. Hey, that's a good idea. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. That's right. Uh, hey, Larry, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, come on. You can tell me. I'm your friend. Well, I was at the popcorn shop yesterday, and some of the kids are making fun of my tooth. What's wrong with your tooth? Nothing. Except I only have one. Don't you think it's a little weird for a grown adult to only have one tooth? It's a little weird for a cucumber to have teeth at all. Uh, but that's beside the point. Uh, Larry! Uh, hang on, I'll be right back. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Oh, hi, Jimmy. Uh, do you have a letter? Right here. I'll just stick it through the mail slot. You really don't need to do that, Jimmy. No problem. Ugh. Have a slaptastic day. I don't even know what that means. What's it say, Bob? Dear Bob and Larry, I have red hair. Uh, no one else in my class has red hair. Sometimes they make fun of me. Can you make my hair brown or black or yellow like everyone else? Stacy... Louisville, Kentucky. I know how you feel, Stacy. Hey, you guys are having the same problem. They need a story, don't you think? Uh, yeah, they... Uh, who said that? It is I, Paco, the storytelling mule. Oh, uh, hi, Paco. You know, I already had a story in mind. Not as good as this story, Mr. Tomato. Have you ever heard of Louis the Short-Necked Giraffe? Come again? I will show him to you. Louis the short-necked giraffe was thusly named on account of his unusually short neck. His neck was so short that the other giraffes would laugh at him and call him short neck. It was very painful. So Louis left the giraffes and went to live with the hippopotamuses. Hippopotami. The hippos, who have no necks whatsoever. But the hippos soon began making fun of Louis for his long neck. Comparatively speaking. So Lewis got on his bike and rode to a fast food restaurant where he bought a cheeseburger. I don't remember where I was going with this. I'm going to go home and think this through one more time. Well, I feel a lot better. What? That didn't make any sense. Stacy and Larry, take a look at this story. So you see, Stacy. And Larry, each one of us was made special, and each one of us is loved. When we remember that, it doesn't matter what anyone else says. I feel a lot better. I hope you feel better too, Stacy. Well, that's all the time... Huh? That's not all the time we have? Three more minutes? Heh, <laughs> well, this is awkward. Hey, someone's here! Hi, Bob. Hi, Larry. Hey, Junior. I'm returning the video I borrowed. Then I'll get out of your way. 
Uh, no, Rush. We're just ending our show about how special we are. Uh, maybe we should play your video. It's the French peas singing about the bottom of the sea. It has nothing to do with being special. Well, sure it does. Uh, the bottom of the sea is a very special place. Uh, are you sure? Uh, play the video. Okay. The bottom of the sea. Uh, very special. Uh, thanks for coming to my house. See you next week. Goodbye. Hey, Bob, do you have any teeth? Well, sure. Uh, sometimes when I smile, I have a whole mouthful of teeth. Where do they go when you aren't smiling? I don't really know. Uh, they just go away. That's pretty special. Uh, I guess it is. I can burp the ABCs. Uh, this isn't that kind of show. Is that from Land's End? L.L. Bean. All right. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. And we're waiting for a letter. There it is. Mail, mail. Here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Where's the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to us. Oh, I got it. Ugh. We need a bigger mail slot. What's it say, Bob? Uh, dear Bob and Larry, tomorrow I'm supposed to go to the dentist, but I'm scared. I'm writing you from under my bed, and I'm not coming out. Ever. Gwyneth, Pahokee, Florida. Okay, Gwyneth. Oh, hold on a sec. Dealing with scary stuff, are we? I got it, Archie. Look no further, Gwyneth. The answers you seek lie within my big book of oddities. In 1433, Portuguese explorer Vasco Palasco was sailing the Pacific when he was attacked by a great sea monster. Keeping his wits about him, he quickly wrapped himself in seaweed and lay motionless on the deck of the ship. To the sea monster's limited eyesight, he looked exactly like a piece of sushi. And as we all know, sea monsters hate sushi. The monster turned and fled into the deep, and Vasco was safe, albeit stuck in seaweed for about seven weeks. The end. So tomorrow, when you go to the dentist, wrap yourself in seaweed and act like a piece of sushi. Cool! You're kidding me, right? Seaweed? Sushi? A tasty solution, don't you think? Uh, no, I don't. Fellas, may I try? Check this one out. So, fear is like a piano? Um, uh, let's try this one more time. Uh, Gwyneth, why don't you take a look at this story? Fascinating! He solved the problem without seaweed! Uh, yes, and you can too, Gwyneth. Just remember that the best way to handle your fears is to face them. Be brave. You can do more than you think. You know, I once spent an entire year under my bed. I tried the seaweed thing. It didn't work. Well, what do you know? And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for coming to my house. Goodbye! Bye. I'm beginning to think you don't appreciate my stories. Well, they're a little unusual. They're odd. It's a book of oddities. Where'd you find that book anyway? Oprah's Book Club. You're kidding me. Well, if it's good enough for Oprah. My point exactly. I'll be back next week. Oh, dear. Flannel? Of course not. Didn't think so. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. And we're waiting for a letter. That's right. And there it is now. Mail, mail. Here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. 
Can I have the letter? Oh, uh, yeah. It's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to me. No, oh, I got it. Ugh. Right. What's it say, Bob? Uh, let's see. Uh, dear Bob and Larry, I'm supposed to color a picture for school, but it's too big. It's taking too long. I want to quit, but my mom says I need to finish. Why should I finish it? It's just one picture. Maria, Bullhead City, Arizona. Well, Maria. I came as fast as I could. Clear off the wall. I gotta film the show. Huh? Oh, hi, Pa. It's okay. I've got a story. Not like this one. <laughs> they don't make them like this anymore. Check this out, Maria. Persistence and you. Thinking of quitting? Look to the animal world for inspiration. This tiger is just lying around. He won't accomplish anything. This polar bear is moving, but he has no plan, no goals. Sure, this ostrich is running along, but after a minute, he gives up and quits. Who will win the race of life? This young orangutan on a turtle. He's been riding this turtle for 17 weeks, and he won't give up. You too can win if you think like an orangutan on a turtle. Well, that was interesting. But look, we still have time to tell another story. Uh, try this one, Maria. That was perfect, Bob. Thanks, Larry. Uh, you see, Maria, if you want to be a finisher when you're grown up, you need to start practicing now. Exactly the point that my film made, and in much less time. Thanks for coming over to my house, kids. We'll see you next week. Goodbye! Bye. It was a nice film, Pa, but don't you think the monkey could have gone faster on his own two feet? Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, but he's a monkey. He can hustle. Slow and steady wins the race. Stick with the title. I think I'd probably just take the bus. I'm allergic to wool. Really? All grapes are. I bet you didn't know that. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV! Uh, did you have coffee this morning? Sure did! Double shot espresso! Oh, boy. Uh, we're waiting for the letter that will set our day in motion. That's it! I'll get it! Mail, mail, here's your mail. I've got it right here in my bucket. Or something. Uh, Paco, is that you? No, it's me, Mr. Lunt. I sound a lot like Paco, but we're not the same, because he's a mule. I'm your replacement mailman. Where's Jimmy? His brother's sick. He had to take care of him. I got it covered, though. Here's the letter you've been waiting for. Refinance your home at today's low rates. I don't think this is our letter. Well, how about this one? Lose weight now, ask me how. No, this isn't it either. This one? You may have already won. Uh, Mr. Lunt, none of these are the letter we need. I knew this was a bad idea. Why does Jimmy have to take care of his brother anyway? We should just take care of ourselves. I'm going home. What do we do now? More coffee? Uh, no, you've had enough coffee. Uh, but we don't have a question to answer. Or do we? I'm not tracking, Bob. Mr. Lunt asked a very good question. Why does Jimmy need to take care of his brother? Why should anyone take care of anyone else? Why not just worry about ourselves? Oh, that question. I don't know, Bob. Why? You know, I've got a story about a girl that had to take care of her little brother. Uh, take a look at this. Well, that was pretty interesting. But what if I have a little sister? Do I have to look out for her, too? Brothers, sisters, it's more than just that, Larry. Uh, check out this story. So we have to look out for, like, everybody? We shouldn't just think about ourselves. We should think of others first. We should show other people the same kind of love that we want them to show us. I guess Jimmy's doing the right thing today, even though we never got our letter. I think we did just fine. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house today. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Can I have that lose weight now, ask me how envelope? I'm getting a little soft around the middle. Well, what have you been eating with your morning espresso? What? Oh, just a Danish. Or two. I think we may have solved your problem without opening that letter. But they're so small. Compared to what? A dog? A small dog? No. My mother gave me a sweater once. Had an elk on the front. Must have been lovely. 
Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. Right-o. And we're waiting for a letter. <gasps> there it is now. Uh, Paco? It is I, Paco, the storytelling mule. Where's our letter? I already got the letter. The mailman and me. We're tight. You can't just open other people's mail. That's against the law. What do I know of the law? I'm a mule. I read the letter. It was good. Little John or Rodney or whatever his name was. He wanted to know about love. Uh, love? Yes. He said they talk about love at his church all the time. But what is this love? He said he loves cupcakes. Is that what they're talking about? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we should find a story about... No need, Tomato. I have prepared a story for little Rodney. Or Frederick. I like to call it Cupcake Love. Once upon a time, there was a cupcake named Jeffrey. He dreamed of love. One day, when Jeffrey was at the dry cleaners washing his cupcake wrapper, he saw a beautiful girl cupcake. Her name was Clarice. Their eyes met. They saw fireworks. Pretty impressive, huh? Hey, that took a long time to make. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Paco? I know, the show. They went to the park and rode in the swan boat. Her sprinkles sparkled in the moonlight. <gasps> hey, do I hear the ice cream truck? I love ice cream! That was really weird. Uh, hey, John, or Rodney, or Frederick, why don't you take a look at this story? Loving a cupcake or ice cream is not the same as loving a person. If you love a cupcake, you want to eat it. You want to do what you want. To love a person, though, means to put them first, to do what they want. That's the kind of love you heard about in church. I love you, Bob. And not like a cupcake. Uh, thanks, Larry. I love you, too. Thanks for coming to my house, kids. See you next week. Goodbye! Bye. What if I love a person who loves cupcakes? Will they still have room in their heart for me? Well, technically, cupcakes don't go to your heart. They go to your stomach and then your hips. Will they have room on their hips for me? I think you're getting confused. You should probably just buy them a salad. Okay. Do you ever take that thing off? Never. I love it. Yeesh. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. That's right, Larry. And we're waiting for a letter. I get it. Mail, mail. Here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Hi, Jimmy. How about that letter? All right. I'll just stick it through the mail slot. You don't have to do that. You can just have it. Not a problem. Enjoy your mail. Thanks. What's it say? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, at school, sometimes we play with blocks. If I had all the blocks, I could build something huge. My teacher says the other kids need some blocks, too. Why shouldn't I have all the blocks? Then I'd be happy. Your friend, Alex. Well, Alex, that's a tricky situation. I found... Leonard the Walrus! I'm sorry, what? Alex needs to hear about Leonard the Walrus! Oh, hi, Paco. I think we can probably handle... Once upon a time, there was a walrus named Leonard. I will show him to you. Leonard lived by the North Pole. One day, his mother sent him to school with a bag of clams. That's what they eat, clams. She said, there's plenty for everyone, so share your clams. When he got to school, his friend Penguin saw his clams. Uh, technically, uh, penguins only live in the southern hemisphere. Uh, there would be no penguins in his school. When he got to school, his friend Parrot saw his clams. Uh, parrots live in the tropics, uh, where it's hot, uh, not the North Pole. When he got to school, his friend Lamp saw his clams. Do they have lamps at the North Pole? Uh, I guess that's okay. Uh, so the lamp saw the clams, and he was hungry. Wait a minute. Lamps don't eat clams. You've ruined my story. 
Oh, great, the North Pole. Uh, I'll get it for you. Oh, forget it. I was trying to teach Alex a valuable lesson, but no, Mr. Scientific Accuracy went and ruined it for me. The penguin don't live in the North. The parrot live in the hot. Tell your own story. I'm done. Well, we don't want to teach kids the wrong facts. Penguins get no further north than the Galapagos Islands. Well, what do we do now? Alex, why don't you check out this story? That was a great story, Larry. Thanks. You see, Alex, being greedy hurts the people around us. If you share the blocks, you can all build something huge together. Uh, Bob? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry I ruined your story. That's okay. I went out and got some fried clams. Do you want one? I am allergic to shellfish. Bob? Uh, sure. Well, thanks for coming over to my house, kids. See you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, these clams are pretty good. Yeah, you'd never guess they were in the trunk of my car for a week. <laughs> what? Oh, man. Is it getting hot in here? That's just the Cajun spice kicking in. I feel, I feel my throat tightening. You're a tomato. You breathe through your leaves, technically speaking. I, I do? Cool. Your grandmother knit that for you? Uh, yes, uh, she did. Hmm. Nice. Hi, kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. On TV. That's right, Larry. We're on TV. And we're here to answer a question that's going to come in the form of a letter. I'm tingly with anticipation. I'll get it. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Right. Uh, can I have the letter? I'll just stick it through the mail slot. Oh, you really don't need to do that. No trouble. Don't mind a bit. Uh, uh, save your thanks. I'm only doing my job. Ta-ta. Uh, Ta-ta. What's it say? Let's see. Uh, dear Bob and Larry, my dad took me to the toy store and said I could pick out one thing. Well, what gives? If he loves me, why can't I have everything? Ricky Trenton, New Jersey. Well... Hello, television world! I hear you have a problem! Oh, that sounds like our old friend Mr. Lunt! I am not Mr. Lunt! I am Paco, the storytelling mule! I have come to tell you a story! Cool! Paco the what? The storytelling mule. Listen up. Once upon a time, there was a squirrel named Dennis. Uh, Dennis the squirrel? I'll show him to you. Dennis the squirrel wanted a new nut, so he went to the nut store. Not only did he see a beautiful new nut there, but he saw a multitude of fine nuts. Uh-oh, the nuts fell down. Hang on. This isn't going so good. Wait while I go home and get more tape. Uh, Mr., I mean, Paco, we need to keep the show rolling. I'll be right back. You know, I think I've got a story that just might do the trick for little Ricky. Watch this one. That was perfect, Bob. See, Ricky? Your dad knows that having a bunch of stuff won't make you happy. Being greedy makes you grumpy. We're really happy when we're thankful for what we already have. Your dad's a smart guy. Except for the time he was sure you had plenty of gas to make it through Death Valley. And the time he thought mayonnaise could be used as sunscreen. We're out of time, Larry. Thanks for coming to my house. We'll see you next week. Goodbye! Goodbye. It was the time he used the car to pull that tree stump out of the yard. And the time he told your mom his love was all the gifts she needed on Valentine's Day. Have you and Ricky been talking? I get around. You know, I look pretty good in overalls. I'm sure you do. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. Are there any giant bagels around here? Huh? You're supposed to say, on TV. On TV. I had a dream last night about a giant bagel. Well, that's unusual. I get it. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Have you ever had a dream about a giant bagel? No, but I had a dream about an aardvark singing opera, if you can picture that. Nope.
Got a letter? All right, here. I'll just stick it through the mail slot. You don't have to do that. It's, it's the a- least I can do for a man who dreams about breakfast pastries. Not all breakfast pastries. Just bagels. Fare thee well, strange fellow. What's it say? Jimmy called me strange. The letter says Jimmy called me strange? No. The Larry said Jimmy called me strange. The letter says, Dear Bob and Larry, This big kid at school said I was a doofus because I'm not very good at soccer. Now I feel terrible. I'm never going to try to play anything again. Bartholomew. That's kind of sad. Vaguely familiar, though. Well, yes. You and Bartholomew are having the same problem. You know... Called a doofus, eh? Bartholomew needs a story. Uh, don't tell me. Uh, from your big book of oddities. Exactly. We're on the same wavelength. Follow along, Bartholomew. In 1878, German schoolboy Heinrich Snell played a game of recess cricket so poorly his schoolmates dubbed him a schnittleflap, which at the time was a terrible insult. Did little Heinrich let it get him down? No. Instead, he devoted his life to building a global chain of pizza parlors called, you guessed it, Schnittleflap. By his 60th birthday, the name Schnittleflap had come to mean high-quality pizza world round, inspiring the phrase still used today, it's not just good, it's Schnittleflap. Unfortunately, his old schoolmates disliked his pizza and renamed him Icky Pizza Boy. The end. If you don't like the name that bully gave you, spend your life building a worldwide chain of pizza restaurants. Yum! I'm not sure that's the best advice, Archie. Or he could do what I did. Abandon the soccer field and take up musical theater. No bully gave me trouble after that. I can just imagine. Uh, Hey, Bartholomew, why don't you give this story a try? So you see, Bartholomew, when you know how wonderfully you were created, how amazingly special you are, you can ignore the guy who calls you doofus because you know it just isn't true. And Larry, you aren't strange, just unique. Thanks, Bob. Tonight I think I'm going to dream about pizza. It's not just good. It's Schnittleflap. Thanks for coming to my house today, kids. See you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. I thought pizza was Italian, not German. Oh, please. And I suppose you think Chinese food came from China. Didn't it? Heavens no! Argentina! I think I need to go lie down. Watch out for the giant bagel. Oh, dear. Can you throw that thing in the washer? Uh, no. Dry clean only. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On the telly. Oh, <laughs> that's what they say in England. On the telly. <laughs> yes, well, that's fun stuff. Top of the morning. <laughs> I wonder where our letter is. Spot on. What? Oh. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. I say, good show. What's up with him? He's being British today. Got the letter? Yep. I'll just stick it through the mail slot. Oh, you really don't need to do that. I insist. Uh, Brilliant! Good luck with Prince Charles. Toodles! Uh, Let's see. Uh, Dear Bob and Larry, I am very small. I can't reach things. When I play soccer, I can hardly kick the ball. Will I ever be able to do anything big? Jacob, South Carolina. Well, Jacob... Fear not! Help has arrived! Huh? Oh, hi, Pa. I got just the film for Jacob. It'll have him right as rain in no time. Watch this, little fella. Oh, dear. Big like me. I used to be small like you. But then my parents started feeding me corn and I grew. Sure, I went through an awkward stage. Here I am at my senior prom. But I kept eating corn and I kept growing. And look at me now. I'm huge. 15 feet tall, 1,200 pounds. And you can grow too if you eat more corn. That ought to do it. Spot on. Spot on? That isn't what Jacob needs. Here, Jacob, watch this. That was fantastic. See, Jacob, you don't have to worry about being little. Little guys can do big things, too. I'll say. Oh, I mean, I say. We're out of time. Thanks for coming to my house. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Cheerio. Have you even been to England? Uh Uh-uh. 
I picked up my accent by watching real British people in movies, like Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. He isn't British. He was just pretending. What? He's so good! I bet he fooled all England! Hello, Mary Poppins! Hello, Mary Poppins! Are there any other accents you could work on? I know you're going to make some remark about my sweater, so don't even bother. I would never. I just wanted to know if that sweater came by itself, or if they threw it in when you bought the bow tie. Hi, kids. Welcome to VeggieTales. On TV. And we're waiting for a letter. There it is. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Where's the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to us. Oh, I got it. Ugh. Thanks. What's today's letter say, Larry? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, I'm having trouble with my big brother. He's really mean to me. And yesterday, he broke my favorite toy, too. I was so angry, I never wanted to talk to him again. But today, he said he was sorry and wanted to be friends again. I don't feel much like accepting his apology or forgiving him for hurting me. I don't even want to talk to him, even though he is my brother. Please tell me what I should do. Signed, John, from Indianapolis. Having trouble with your brother can be a real problem, John. I wonder who that is. It is I, Paco, the storytelling mule, with a story that might help John. It is a story about a sweet, fun-loving storytelling mule, much like myself. His name was, uh, Sako. Um, Paco? Sako looks just like you. A mere coincidence. Anyway, Sako the Storytelling Mule had an older brother, just like John does. A big, mean brother. He would say things like, Hey, Paco! You mean Sako, don't you? That is what I said. Anyway, he would say, Hey, Sako! What good is a storytelling mule anyway? Real mules like me pull carts and wagons. You are a blight on all of donkeydom with your silly storytelling. Then he'd step on my hoof. You mean he'd step on Sako's hoof? That is what I said. He was always being big and mean and stepping on my hooves and laughing. Ha 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 And taking my toys and... Uh, Paco? Yes? Do you know where you're going with this? Not really. John, if you're having a problem accepting your brother's apology and forgiving him, maybe you should watch this. Wow! That was amazing! After all the stuff his brothers did to him, Joseph still forgave them when they said they were sorry. Right, Larry. Uh, you see, John, if someone is truly sorry for something, we need to accept their apology and forgive them. Just like Joseph. He didn't stay mad at his brothers for what they did to him years before, even though it hurt him a lot. Maybe you could try accepting your brother's apology, John. Everybody needs to learn how to forgive, even when it's hard. Except for Sako and his mean donkey brother! Uh, no, that definitely goes for Sako, too. How did I know you were going to say that? Think that sweater comes in extra short and squatty? <laughs> Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV! Uh, we're waiting for the mail to come so we can... <laughs> uh, answer your questions. Mail's here! Busy day! Gotta run! Mail, mail. At least they didn't try to jam it through the mail slot this time. Oh, look, here's a letter from Stacy in Dallas. <clears throat> Ooh, I wonder what it says. Well, I'm about to read it. Good, then I won't have to wonder anymore. Stacy writes, Dear Bob and Larry, I've got a friend who is pressuring me to do some things I know are wrong. But if I say no, she won't be my friend anymore. What should I do? Well, Stacy, that's a very difficult problem. One that takes careful consideration and wisdom. One that uh, Larry? Yeah, Bob? Ooh, excellent idea. Stacy, if you're having trouble doing what your parents have told you is right, maybe you should watch this. And you won't have to wonder what to do anymore. So, Stacy, I hope that helped. I'm sure your parents have taught you the difference between right and wrong.
but it's not always easy to do what's right. Especially when people are pressuring you to go against what's right. Be strong, Stacy. I found that story thrilling and exciting. I was touched by the moving portrayal of a man who did what was right, even though he was pressured not to. I laughed, I cried, it moved me, Bob. Uh, kids, we'll see you next time. Goodbye! Now maybe next time they'll mention me in the song. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. We're waiting for the mail so we can answer your questions. Not gonna happen, Bob. Why not? Well, I told Jimmy we didn't need him today. Well, why would you do that? Because today we're gonna answer kids' emails on my computer. Oh, I don't know, Larry. This laptop would work so much better if I actually had a lap. Hmm, can't seem to get a signal. I know there's a hot spot around here somewhere. Uh, Larry, you're blocking the camera. Still looking for a signal, Bob. Okay, got one. Uh, do we have any letters? Sure, bunches. Well, uh, could you read one? Uh, it'll be just a second. Hey, what's going on? Oh, hi, Mr. Lunt. Uh, Larry had to go outside to get a good signal for his wireless computer. Here we go. It's from Olivia, from New Mexico. He says it's from Olivia, from New Mexico. Over. She says she was sneaking a cookie and accidentally broke her grandma's favorite cookie jar. Then she told a lie because she was afraid she'd get in trouble. Uh, tell Olivia to pack up and leave the country. There's no use in going back to grandma's, ever. What? Uh, the views expressed by the messenger are not necessarily the opinions held by the letter writer. What exactly did Olivia say? She lied so she wouldn't get in trouble for breaking a cookie jar. Oh, that is troubling. Because when you tell one fib, it can lead to another, and another, and another, and pretty soon you'll get all tangled up in a whole web of lies with no way out. Bob, she wants to know what to do. The best thing to do is never tell a lie in the first place. Uh, but watch this. It should help. So, Olivia, after that, I hope you can see that you should always try to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if you do something wrong, like breaking Grandma's cookie jar, it's best to be honest and face the consequences. Tell the truth. Face the consequences. Over. Fib's bad. Truth good. Got it. Over. We'll see you all next week. Bob's going to see a bunch of kids next week. Over. Really? Can I come? Over? Larry wants to know if he can come over. Over. When's that sweater going to be finished? Whatever do you mean? It is finished. Whoever knit it forgot to add arms. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. On TV. Uh, that's right, Larry. Uh, we're waiting for the mail to come so we can start the show. <gasps> there it is now. Mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. You should hear the song our plumber sings. Can we have the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. Hmm, I'll just, uh, hmm. It just hand it to me over the door. No, I can get this. Until next time, enjoy your mail! What's it say, Bob? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, Sometimes on the playground I get pushed around by this one group of kids who don't like me because I follow the rules. I don't know how to stand up against them and do what's right. If I do, I might get beat up. What should I do? Signed, Elise, from Cleveland. I came as soon as I hoid! Uh, do you think you can help Elise? Uh, can I help? Watch this! Here I am in Mexico. That was the best meal of my life. Took a lot of courage for me to eat those spicy hot jalapeno peppers, I can tell ya. And here I am in Paris. You wanna talk about courage? I ate a crepe at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and I'm afraid of heights. And here I am in Japan, where they eat raw fish called sushi. Why are all your vacation slides of food? Because the pyramids have been around for centuries, but that food was gone in 15 minutes. It was all delicious. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. 
Elise, if you want to learn how to dig down deep inside and find the courage to stand up for what's right, why don't you watch this instead of Pog Grape's vacation slides? So, Elise, I hope you can see that sometimes it takes a lot of courage to do what's right. And stand up against someone who's bigger and more powerful than you are. But if you look deep inside yourself, you may find you do have the courage to stand up against people who do the wrong things. Just like Esther. That Esther sure was brave to stand up against the king. And speaking of kings, here's a slide of a king-sized popcorn bowl I ate last Christmas in Des Moines. Hey, Archie. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Depending on age and size, about a cord and a half. That sounds about right. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. And we're waiting for a letter. There it is. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Where's the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to us. Oh, I got it. Ugh. What's it say, Bob? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, Christmas is coming and I'm so excited. I gave my mom and dad a mega list of all the presents I want to get this year. But I went to the mall today and saw a bunch more things that I really, really want. Only, I can't find where my mom hid my list. So I need your help. How am I going to put all those new things I want on the missing list to make sure I get everything? Signed, Jody from Fort Wayne. Oh, boy, Jody. You know, Christmas isn't all about... Oh, that reminds me. Uh, Larry, where are you going? To the basement, where I keep my super-secret treasure chest. How big is your treasure chest? Pretty big. There you are, Mr. Muffin. How'd you get in here? Uh, Larry, we're still on the air, and we have to help Jody learn that giving is better than receiving on Christmas. Got it! Well, what's this? Your Christmas present from last year. I forgot to give it to you. Didn't have time to wrap it. Merry Christmas, Bob. Oh, thank you, Larry. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, Jody, why don't you watch this with us? I think you'll see that Christmas isn't just about piling up presents for yourself. The special meaning of Christmas is in giving. If you want to give me my gift now, I'll pretend to be surprised. So, Jody, I hope you can see from that story how Christmas shouldn't be about getting everything you want. It's more about giving. Like when I gave you that keychain I brought all the way back from Fiji. Giving it to you made me feel terrific. Exactly. Christmas should be about the joy there is in giving. So, Bob, don't you want to feel joyful and terrific? What are you trying to say, Larry? I got you a gift, and it's better to give than receive on Christmas. Uh, but it's not Christmas yet. Did I mention that keychain's from Fiji? Merry Christmas, Jody. Say Merry Christmas, Larry. Merry Christmas! Is that sweater itchy? Uh, no. When it shrinks, I call dibs. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. On TV. Uh, that's right, Larry. Uh, we're waiting for the mail to come so we can start the show. <gasps> there it is now. Mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Can we have the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. Hmm, I'll just, uh, hmm. It just hand it to me over the door. No, I can get this. Ugh. Until next time, enjoy your mail! What's it say, Bob? Oh. Almost forgot. Uh, you got a package. Thanks, Jimmy. It finally came! It's here! It's here! What's here, Larry? I'll show you in a second. Read the letter. All right. It says, Dear Bob and Larry, my friend Ann told me a secret about my other friend Sally, so I told Bethany. Bethany told her friend Chris, and now everybody knows about it. And then I found out the secret may not be true, and I'm afraid Sally's feelings could get hurt. It's all turned into a big mess. What should I do? Signed, Catherine from San Francisco. 
Well, Catherine, uh, that's a very good question. When we... Catherine's problems are solved. What's that, Larry? It's a mind-reading helmet. Now, whenever you hear a story about someone, you won't have to worry about whether it's true or not. You can just read their mind and know for sure. Larry, no one can read anyone else's mind. I know that, Bob. That's why I bought this helmet. Go ahead, think of something. Nope, not getting anything. Try harder. Larry, that isn't going to... I know. Kids, concentrate really hard and I'll tell you what you're thinking. Concentrate? Concentrate? No, getting nothing. Must need batteries. Catherine, spreading rumors can create lots of problems, so be careful about repeating what you hear because it may not be true. But I think if you watch this, you'll see a way to solve your problem. Hey, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, no, you didn't. And that. This thing's amazing. So, Catherine, be careful about repeating something you hear because if it's not true, it can cause you a lot of problems. Uh, maybe you should tell Sally what you did, apologize, and then make sure everyone knows the secret isn't true. I'm thinking that I'm hungry. <gasps> hey, I just read my mind. It works. That doesn't mean it works. Bob, I thought I was hungry, and I am hungry. What more proof do you need? See you next time. Goodbye. You know, I think that's on backwards. Why, I believe it is. Nice. Hi, kids, and welcome to VeggieTales. On TV. That's right, Larry. I love being on television. I'll get it. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Oh, great. Really? Mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag. Jimmy, in we've bucket. heard this before. I know, I know. Just stick it through the mail slot. Don't mind a bit. Ta-ta. Uh, uh. uh, What's, it, What's say? it say? What's it say? Let's see. Uh, dear Bob and Larry, my dad tells me my grandma hasn't been feeling well lately. I love her so much, but I can't do anything to make her feel better. My big brother says we need to trust in God. What gives? If he has a plan for us, why can't I know what it is? Good question. So do you think it's possible that God has a plan for Grandma? Sign Mary from Hoboken. It's not only possible, it's a sure thing. But we can't always know God's plan. So take a look at this and you'll see what we mean. Learning to trust God's plan was tough for Gideon, just like it was for you, Mary. Right-o, Bob. And I'm still learning to trust, too. Thanks for coming to my house, kids. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye. My mother gave me a sweater once. Had an elk on the front. Must have been lovely. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. Right-o. And we're waiting for a letter. Oh, there it is now. Uh, Paco? It is I, Paco the Storytelling Mule. Where's our letter? I just ran into Jimmy the mailman who said there is no letter today for the tomato or the cucumber. But what are we going to do about the show? We always read a letter from someone. Okay, let Paco solve your problems. Paco, the problem-solving storytelling mule, will now tell you a story about three triplets. Uh, let's hear. You will hear. I'm going to tell it to you. Right now. There are three triplets named Maria, Diego, and... Uh, I forget the other one's name. But they had a real problem. Loving their neighbors. For this story, I need a washing machine and a cupcake. That's really a dryer. And who doesn't love fireworks? Oh, this is gonna be a good story. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Paco? Do not interrupt Paco, the storytelling mule, while he is working. The last thing we need is a swan. Oh. How about a giraffe? And maybe a hippo. You can never have too That's many animals in a story. You could... How about a throat Mr. Ludd brought up a very good topic. Oh, the one about Anna, Diego, and the other one. You know, we've got a great show with a story about learning to love your neighbor. Uh, take a look at this. So, we have to love, like, everybody? Well, we shouldn't just love people that are like us. That's too easy. We should show everyone the same kind of love that we want them to show us. 
So, I guess the way Mr. Lunt loved that cheeseburger was okay then? It was a funny kind of love, but good. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house today. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, I used to have socks that color. I'm sure you did. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. And we're waiting for a letter. There it is. Mail, mail, here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Can I have the letter? Oh, uh, yeah, it's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to me. No, oh, I got it. Ugh. Right. What's it say, Bob? Uh, dear Bob and Larry, I got a model airplane for my birthday, but when I opened it, there were no directions inside. Wow. Dad says we should go back to the store and get the directions, but I think I can build the plane without them. Matt from Texas. So your dad wants you to... Oh, hold on a sec. It is I, Paco, the storytelling mule. Uh, hi, Paco. Hi, I'm going to tell you a story about following directions. You know, many animals in the wild kingdom have to follow very specific directions to get ahead in the world. Wow, think this could be helpful? Maybe, maybe not. Say you got yourself a baby giraffe. He wants to have lunch. What's he going to do? If he reads the directions, he'll know that giraffes can't ride bicycles. But he doesn't read them. He gets on his bike and he runs into a giant cheeseburger. For a giraffe, that's a disaster because they are vegetarians. So, where was I going with this? This isn't going so good. Wait while I go home and get more tape. Wow, I like the ironic finish. What? That didn't make any sense. Larry, let's watch this if we want to learn about following directions. To be continued. So you see, Matt, Mo is well on his way to learning to follow directions. yippee ki -yay. Thanks for coming to my house. We'll see you next week, partners. You think I can borrow that sweater sometime? Ah, uh, no. Family heirloom. Well, hi there, everybody, and welcome to, to Veggie Tales on TV. I really like that part about being on TV. We always wanted to be on TV, and now we are. Right, and we're going to show you the second half of Mo and the Big Exit. So sit back and watch what happened last time. Well, there you go, Matt. It was hard for Mo to follow God's directions. But he did it, and everything worked out in the end. Thanks for coming to my house, kids. See you next week. Goodbye! Goodbye. I'll give you a nickel if you bark like a dog. Never! Meow! Yeesh. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV. Uh, that's right, Larry. And we're waiting for a letter. I'll get it. Mail, mail. Here is your mail. It's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail. I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale. For I am the man who delivers your mail. Hi, Jimmy. Wow, on key. How about that letter? All right, I'll just stick it through the mail slot. You don't have to do that. You can just have it. Not a problem. Enjoy your mail. Thanks. What's it say? It says, Dear Bob and Larry, at school, sometimes the teacher gives us rules we're supposed to follow. My friends don't always obey her, like when they run to the playground. But if I don't run, I don't get a swing. What should I do? Signed, Alice, from Portland, Oregon. Well, obedience is always important. Check this one out. So you see, when Josh had a hard time obeying what God wanted him to do, he just went along and did what he was told to do. Just like you should obey your teachers and parents because they know what's best for you. Great advice, Bob. And very practical. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for coming to my house, kids. See you next week. Goodbye! Bye. You know, a sweater with stripes would make you look taller. Yeah. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. On TV! Right, oh, Larry. And we're waiting for a letter with a question. I hope it's a good one. They're always good ones. There it is! Mail, 
your mail, here is your mail, it's here in my bag, not in bucket or pail, I bring it through hailstorm or blizzard or gale, for I am the man who delivers your mail. Okay then, Jimmy. Where's the letter? It's right here. I'll just put it through the mail slot. You can just hand it to me. No trouble! Oh, I got it! Oh, that can't be very good. Okay, thanks. All in the line of duty. What's it say? Let's see. Dear Bob and Larry, I had a really awful day. I got a zero on my math, my dog ran away, and I just know tomorrow's not gonna get any better. Signed, Lewis, from Mount Washington. Sounds like someone could use a lesson in hope. Put your eyeballs on this. Hi, kids. Now you gotta remember that... You saw only half the show! Well, you think they'll watch again next week? Well, if they wanna see the whole show... Well, I would. So here's some previews about what's coming up next. I'll hand me that sweater and I'll let you stand in front next time. Hi, kids. Welcome to Veggie Tales On TV! Remember how we got a letter about a boy feeling hopeless? And we watched the first half of that show about the Easter Carol? Well, let's watch the second part. I know I'm feeling hopeful already. So you see, Lewis, no matter how bad things get, I think it's important to always have hope. And remember, tomorrow is another day, a chance to start over fresh and new. Whew, tricky stuff. Being hopeful. Well, we made it. Hey, kids, thanks for coming to my house. We'll see you next week. Bye! Bye!